Hello there. your solo then but um, we haven't got that far yet at that point of the song you would do a little musical solo um, that song is called Mama Don't Lao uh, it's a skiffle song and it's one that my uh, my my dear old dad uh, used to play in a skiffle group many years ago I was on the tea chest bass he was on the guitar and we used to go around pub to pub and uh, performed for an audience and then we'd hand out or my dad would hand out uh, instruments to to uh, people in the pub and then in that song they would have to do a solo each and uh, it was great fun people loved it um, and that's what I want to talk about on this uh, number number five mindfulness imagination fair this is my portable studio while we're sitting on lockdown and um, I wanted to talk to you about being solo basically uh, not being hand solo, that would be rather ridiculous, but being solo in the sense that um, you are the most important person in your world. And um, I think it's important that we acknowledge that. We don't tend to acknowledge it. We like to or tend to put other people before us. And, you know, while that's um, very noble, and very good. It's probably not right because um, you're no good to anybody if your if your health isn't very good. It's most important to look after yourself first, and then you're more useful to those around you that you love and that you want to care for. But we don't tend to think like that. We tend to think that putting yourself first is a mark of being selfish. Well, it's not. It's, it's uh, a mark of self-respect and it's also a mark of respect for those that you love um, because you're no good to anybody if you can't help anybody in that sense. You know, uh, on an aeroplane when they tell you to put your mask on first before you help anybody else. They do that for a reason because you're no good to anybody if you're gasping for air. Um, you need to help yourself first. You know, and we have this life. And in this life, I am me in my life. This is my world. What I see, what I feel, what I connect with is all down to me. I, I am in control of that. It, whatever happens to me ultimately is my responsibility, how I react to it. Um, I can't help if somebody yells abuse at me, but I can help my reaction to it. Whether I choose to act on it or ignore it is ultimately down to me. And I think... Um, you know we should we should be aware of that and we should we should embrace that really because how many times do you hear people saying so and so told me this and it made me feel this and made me feel that well you know what nothing made you do anything you made you do that basically they didn't make you do that they said something nasty but they didn't make you feel the way that you feel you allowed that to go in and then if you if you acknowledge that, then that gives you the power to then allow it to disappear, to go away, to filter off into the clouds, to become something else and go and annoy something else and sit in the corner and sulk. You can allow that emotion to push away. I'm reminded uh, when I um, think about this sort of thing, it sort of reminds me, partly it reminds me of video games where um, you are... Uh, you are in control of your character and uh, you you dictate how the universe shapes. Um, and I, of course, like video games, if you get it wrong, not saying that if you die, but if you get it wrong, you can restart. You can go back to your saved position and start all over again. Um, what, what that sort of means is that you are the hero of your story. Um, rather like these books that I, mean, I remember from a, a long time ago, back in my childhood, the, uh, the fighting fantasy novels where you choose the direction that you take. For instance, 
Do you want to examine the bits of wood? Turn to page 328. Do you want to study the length of rope? Turn to page 125. Do you want to leave through the north door? Turn to page 73. Oh, I think leave through the north door. Now, of course, with these books, you can cheat because you can turn to the page and you can then think, you can read on a little bit, remember where you were when you made that decision, um, read on a bit, and if it doesn't go too well, you go back to where you were before you made that fateful decision, which you can't do in life, but sometimes you can. Sometimes you can reset it, as I say, like a video game. Sometimes, you know, if you look at yourself enough, sometimes you can trace your steps back and say, right, it was here where that happened, and I can work from there and go from there. Sometimes it happens, not all of the time. But what I'm, I want to explain to you in this particular video is the power that you have with your life. You are responsible for it. You are responsible for the emotions, the feelings, uh, the decisions, um, how things affect you, around you. You know, if you... Every, each one of us has this, and you know, if you're if you imagine a circle, it's quite easy to imagine at the moment with us being in lockdown, a two meter circle around you, and that is your world, everything there, and then you meet somebody else, and those two circles overlap for a little while, and then your two worlds sort of become one, like a like a I don't know parallel universe. Um, you become you become something, and you connect. Um, and for a little while, you bounce along in, in, your, in your united worlds, and then you disappear again, and off you go. It's almost, it's a bit like existentialism, in a way, but um, you do, you know, whatever you see in front of you is your world. There are obviously lots of other people around, but ultimately your focus should be on what's immediately ahead of you. Um, immediate ahead of me is me, talking to me in a camera, which is a little bit weird, I can tell you. So what I'd like you to take away from this, I don't want to ramble on for too long, is that you have responsibility for your world. Um, if you don't like things that are in it, then you have to remove those things that are in it. If you want those things in it to change, if you need a change of landscape, outlook, whatever, if you need a change of colour, then you do that. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to do that. And um, I think it's an important lesson that we all should learn that by not putting others before us, we're actually doing us and others a huge favour. Look after yourself first, especially at this time in our world when, um, when we need it more than ever. We need everyone to look after themselves, do the right thing, be kind, be responsible and be care, be careful, take care of each other. Anyway, that was my bad guitar playing at the beginning. I am learning. I'm uh, getting on for quite a long, uh, quite a, quite a, quite a long years in my life. And I decided to start picking up the guitar and I decided to start uh, tinkling away at the piano uh, in the corner there that you can't see. And, um, and you know what? It's never too late never too late to start doing it and I'm enjoying it and I'm not doing anybody any harm apart from probably annoying the neighbours. Anyway, I would like to finish off with just a little a little meditation that you can take away with you. Now this is something, um, uh, it's, it's a transcendental meditation uh, which you can do uh, on your own. You can lie down on a bed or on your sofa or wherever you want to lie down, wherever you're comfortable, sit down somewhere, put your earphones in um, and find a piece of music that is roughly 10 minutes long. So usually that would be a classical piece of music. Um, a, a particular favourite of mine is um, Sibelius's Finlandia, which is roughly, it's sort of nine, 10 minutes. Uh, it's quite a rousing piece, quite dramatic. Uh, I, I know of it because um, it was used in the soundtrack to Die Hard 2, Die Harder, yeah. That was a title that uh, didn't require a lot of imagination. Um, but it was, and that introduced me to Sibelius. So, you know, no bad thing. Um, but there are, you know, you could find an opportune. There are some, 
there are some rock tunes that go on for uh, for a fair bit you know it doesn't have to be 10 minutes but but more than more than your pop song because you want to give yourself time to slip into into a sort of meditative state try and access that higher channel and try and focus on the things that you want and when you see something that you want to do whatever it is it could be learning the guitar it could be uh watching a being well, making a film it could be it could be writing a book it could be anything anything that you want to do painting the hallway you visualize it uh, and by visualizing you completing it and doing it and having fun doing it visualize the process and by doing that you're setting up your subconscious brain to actually getting there and uh, getting it done you'll start to make steps towards achieving that which you want to do um, and the transcendental meditations because they're quite deep and you so the music is good to to give you to filter out some of your thoughts um, because otherwise you can start to be distracted by thoughts and the music can just help to keep you calm and level um, it can it can help you to uh, to sort of focus on what it is that you wish to do um, so there you are that's 10 minutes of me and uh, this is mindfulness imagination fair my name is Zach Thraves um, I will be uh, coming out when we're all allowed out at some point in the near future in the meantime stay safe be good be mindful and uh, you know try and learn an instrument why not even if it's the kazoo go for it I'm going now to turn that off <laughs>